Hey y'all, it's Gina Tell again. I'm just doing a little video here to show you a fun new product that the Fat Quarter Shop sent me. These are six inch vintage kite papers. And so this is foundation paper and they are gonna make this star pattern. So I'm gonna show you how to use them. It looks a little complicated at first. When I first opened it, I was like, oh boy, but it's really not that complicated. So the instructions are on the inside panel. When you open up the, the front and it shows you what you need to get um, cut for this project. So you're gonna need of the dark fabric, you're gonna need four, three and a half by four and a half, and the light fabric, you're gonna need eight, three and a half by four and a half. So basically I am using just some scrap pieces. I pulled some five inch scrap pieces from my bins and then I've just cut them three and a half by four and a half. So I'm actually going to do my center with this fabric and then I'm going to do all of the outside pieces with random blues from my scrap bin. So let's let's show you how to do this. So here's the first one that I did for practice and that's what the back of it looks like. So you're working one, two, three, and then once you get four of them done, then you attach those four together to make this. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do, I'm gonna leave the instructions open here. So the first thing that we wanna do is we're gonna take our papers and we are going to do, well, I can't get them off here. There we go. All right, so we're going to take the paper and on the instructions, it says for the center, center the placement one fabric rectangle right side up on the wrong side of the paper. So the wrong side of the paper and right side up. So that's how we're gonna be working. We wanna see it from this side and we're gonna work on this side. And so it shows to put the fabric like that. And then what we're gonna do is, so we're gonna be working between lines one and two first. And so I'm going to pull out my little cutting board here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold on the line. I like to fold it on the side that you can see um, and then fold it over. And for this one, what I usually do is pin the very first one until I have one stitch and then I don't pin anymore. And so we're gonna take our add a quarter ruler and we're gonna trim it back. So that leaves you a quarter of an inch right there. And then we're gonna take one of our blues and we are going to just put it so that they both are matching right there. And then we're gonna flip the paper back over because we're gonna sew on this line. So that's gonna give us the quarter of an inch. And then we want the good side to good side as far as the fabric so that when it opens up, they're facing the right direction. And so then we're gonna take it under the needle and we're gonna stitch on the line. So we're gonna stitch right here on this line. And I have my stitch length at about one and a half. So it's pretty tiny. And I like to stitch just a little past the line. And then now that we have the first stitch line done, I don't really worry too much about the pins. Okay, so I keep my iron right here next to me when I'm piecing. I have a little TV tray that I cover. And that's just barely gonna get me where I wanna be. So I think I should have put the paper the other way. Let's see. It was long enough to work, but I wanna turn it the other way because I think that's gonna make more sense. Yes. So we want it to go like that. So I'm gonna press it again. 
Okay, so when we, when we put them good side to good side, we are going to put the long side of the paper or the long side of the fabric. I stitched on this part. We want to stitch on the shorter side. The three and a half inch side is the side we, are, we want to stitch on. Now I'm going to realign it here. Okay. So we're just going to go right over again. That's okay. It's good to show you ways to overcome your issues also. Okay, so that's how we want to do it. So I'm going to press it. I like to press it in between each time when I'm doing paper piecing. Just makes it a little bit easier for me. You don't have to. All right, so now we're going to fold it on the line between one and three. So we did one and two. Now we're doing one and three. And we're going to fold it over that way. And then we're going to fold it on this line. And we're going to take our add a quarter. Trim that off so that there's just a quarter of an inch left. And now we're going to take one of our other pieces of blue. Let's do this one. Okay, so now we want it to go like that. So we want the long, we're stitching on the three and a half inch side. I'll flip the paper back over and then we're stitching again on the line. And now when we fold it over, we have what we need. All right, I'm gonna press it. And now I'm gonna trim it. And we're gonna trim, we're gonna trim on this. This is the final line trim. So we're gonna trim it on this line. And then we're gonna trim on this next line. So this line is the sewing line that we're gonna, when we sew the four pieces together that is the line that we want to trim it on. So don't trim it on this spot in the dotted line. That's for sewing later. Trim it on the solid line. All right. And so these two pieces that are left over, um, I take, I make a scrap bucket for all of my projects. And so um, anything, two, two inches is usually what I pick. That's not quite two. Um, but I do have a one inch bin also. If you wanted to use that for a one inch bin or one and a half inch, you could use that, but we're gonna throw it away for now. Okay, so this is the one I made before. This is the one we just made. Okay, so let's make another one. Because I, I learned now, so I should be better at it this time. All right, so we want the good side facing up on the wrong side of the paper. We want it to be like that. All right, and now we're gonna use a pin. And pin it right there. And I push it all the way up so the little ball doesn't get in my way. And then we are going to fold the paper over on the line and then fold it back. Now we're gonna trim a quarter inch away and toss that piece. Now we're going to use one of our next pieces. And so we want it to go like that, not like this. So we're gonna put it like that. And we're gonna stitch on the line. There we go, and press. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Fold it on the line. And now fold it back on the line. And the reason why I press it is so that there's not that 
um, so it doesn't leave any any bunches right there. Sometimes when you paper piece, there can be a little bit of extra right there. Okay. And now we'll do our next piece. We're gonna place it good side to good side. Push our paper back over. I just slide it right over. Now we got it. Okay, now we're gonna trim it again. And we're gonna trim right on the line, the solid line. I'm gonna turn it this way just a little. So trim it on the solid line. And then this one we're gonna trim on the solid line as well. Same with this side, pull it over just a little. And now we have that one. Throw all our pieces away. Look at that. Okay. I don't think we need the instructions now, so I'm gonna put those right there. All right, now let's do our next one. Okay, so there's our paper. We wanna flip it over and we want the good side showing from the top. And I'm gonna pin and then we're gonna fold it over. Trim it on the line. Oops. Okay, so now we're gonna put our next blue. I'm gonna line it up right there on the line. And we're gonna slide it on over. Take our pin out, make sure that all of our fabric is covering the paper. Press it real quick. And now we're gonna do this side. Trim it again. We're almost pros at this. Okay, next, next blue. And again, we're putting the three and a half inch side on the stitching side. Okay. Looks good. All right, little press and then we can trim. And you can probably do all the number ones, then all the number twos, all the number threes, all at once for all four of them. Um, it might go a little bit faster, but since this is my first time and I wanted to show you all the steps I'm doing each individual one. Alrighty. So there's our three blue ones and my extra random gray one. Now, so we want to put it the good side facing up. Pin. Trim. 
All right, so our last two blue ones. So these are great if you have a bundle of um, um, charm packs. Well, if you're gonna make a quilt, you're gonna definitely need more than one bundle, but you get where I'm going with this. Because the, the pieces are three and a half by four and a half, so it would be really easy to trim all of them down to three and a half by four and a half from a charm pack. here fold over our paper I just grab both pieces and slide it over we're sewing right on the line so it tells you what to do on the paper you're sewing it right on these lines you're trimming and then this dotted lines are for sewing the pieces together so if you forget it's written on there Now, let's trim. Oh, I think I missed it. I missed a piece. can throw those in the trash and now so if we look at our our vintage kite front the fat quarter shop has the colored ones in the center and the light ones on the outside and I did mine in the reverse so I will have all of mine in the center all the light ones in the center and the dark ones and so if you're gonna make a quilt, you wanna just stay with that same theme. All the centers would need to be a light color and all the outside ones would be a darker color. That way, when you're looking at the quilt, you can see all those stars in light colors. And then what it will do is it's gonna create um, these fun little designs in each one of all different colors. So, um, so that'll be pretty neat. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sew them together and you can take the papers off or you can sew them with the papers on. It probably would be easier for most to sew with the with on the line since it's provided there for you. Um, I probably, because I don't like pulling the papers all off at one time, I probably would pull them off. I would probably try it. Oh. I ran out of bobbin thread. You should check that the next time you're making a video. <laughs> oh goodness. That's how the, that's how it's going. All right. So anyway, it did a little bit, but that's what you're going to be doing is, um, let me see if I have any bobbin thread wound up. I do. What my, what I do is I change my needle and I rewind bobbins every five bobbins. So I make five bobbins for myself put them all in my drawer and I change the needle. And so when my five bobbins are out, then I am forced to change the needle, clean out my sewing, my sewing area down here and um, rewind the bobbins and do all that. So that's just kind of a little, a little thing I do with myself. So I had one more left and it's just a good way to make sure that you maintain your machine and you have a, a new clean, needle so you're not using it too up uh, too much and the reason why i don't like to leave the papers on is because this part i don't like to pull all the papers off after i've sewn all these um usually what i do is i pull it from the center on the next one we're gonna do it the other way and see how we like it. And 
And this is the reason why you want your stitch length pretty small because your stitches are gonna be really small because you don't want when you're doing all this tugging and pulling on your stitches, if they're real far apart, it's gonna pull apart. And we don't want that. All right. So there's our paper mess. And now we have this part of our block. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna press it open. Okay. So we've pressed it open, now we have that part done. Now let's try it the other way. Let's take the papers off first. It makes sense to pull the two outside pa papers first and then the center one should pull right out. I usually just stick my fingernail right in the center of, and then pull up. All right. And now we're gonna put these together. And if there is a little piece of paper in that center part, you wanna take it out because that'll make a lot of bulk. Um, and so what you can do is you can pin it and I just pull them apart and fold them so you can see where the two whites, the two white points are. Or you can poke it through one side, right on the point like that, and then you can put it into the point on the other side and push them together. And then you've got both of your points touching. And then you wanna straighten out your ends. And I'm stitching at a quarter inch. And I'm taking my pin out just as I approach it. Let's see how I did. <laughs> we sewed them together the wrong way. <laughs> All right, so here, we're going, I'm gonna show you how I pull my seams apart, even when they're super tiny. If you go to the very end, where the two pieces are connected and get yourself a little starting point like that. And then as long as you have a nice sharp, if you hold the two pieces together, you can just push, push, push. And when you get to a seam, sometimes you have to slow down and, and pull them that way. But once you get past your seam, and you can try it both directions with the red dot going down or the red dot going up. I usually have the red dot on the top. I don't know if that's the right way, but if you just pull it like that and it pulls those stitches right out. So now let's do it the correct way. So we want it to go like that. So these two are the points that we want to marry together. And so I just push my pin in right before I get to the line. All right, let's see what we did now. Yay, we did it. All right, so I'm gonna press it open. So I have a TV tray that I keep right to the side of, I'm right-handed, so right to the side of the right side of my machine. And I have a little wool mat, and so when I'm piecing, I pull that over. And I use a TV tray so that I can put it away and it's not sitting out all the time. So when I do an open seam, I marry the seam together and I do a pin on either side of the open seam. Then this one we're gonna put right on next to the seam. And the same thing with this one. And then we're gonna start and we're gonna stitch a quarter of an inch. Oops. 
All right. Yay, look how cute. All right, I'm gonna press it open again. Cause now we have, we wanna make sure these, I would definitely press these open. So I press it open on the, on the back side. I press it open on the back side and then I flip it over. And then we have our little block. Isn't it cute? And so when you use the papers, they're gonna be exactly six inches. This ruler is seven inches. So mine is six and a quarter. So that would make it six inches. Um, six and a half unfinished blocks. So we got it perfect. So that's how you make those. And I think it would be really cute. You could do these in red, white, and blue, or you could do them in holiday colors. If you wanted like pillows or table runners, it'd be cute in you know red and green for a table runner. Or obviously you can do a whole quilt. But that is the new paper that the Fat Quarter Shop sent me to try out. And I think they're pretty cool. So I'll link it below in case you wanna try out and make some for yourself. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe to my new channel.